I've been asked a couple of times now whether my eddy has been worth the money, and it's something that I hadn't really thought about. I had a comment on a recent video asking me about it, so I decided to run the numbers and share my findings in this video. I've had my solar PV installed since January of this year, and after a few months I realised that I was exporting a small but steady amount of power. I kept hearing that self-consumption was way better than exporting, so I figured a solar diverter was an ideal way to soak up this excess. As I already had a Zappi for my EV, an eddy seemed like an obvious addition. It's able to divert as little as 100 watts, so it certainly seems suited to the task of mopping up. How does the eddy fit in? In my house, we have two adults and two small children. We have a 210 litre Mixer G Smart hot water tank, which we had installed in 2021. I heat 65% of the water in the tank and this covers us for most of the day. Since March last year, I've been using off-peak electricity to heat the water and only using my gas boiler to top up the hot water if we run out. My off-peak electricity price is roughly the same as my gas, so this lets me save money and cut CO2. It takes longer, but I just start heating the water earlier in the day. We have a 3.6 kilowatt inverter with 5.8 kilowatt hours of battery storage. In April, I purchased an Eddy and the Mixer G Solar PV add-on. I installed it all myself and then had an electrician wire it into my consumer unit. In terms of the overall cost, I spent about £550 on the whole thing. The Eddy was almost £400 by itself. The Mixer G add-on was another £150 and my electrician charged me about £100 to wire it in as part of my Henley block rewire. You can learn more about that in my video about battery drain. If I'd had it all professionally installed, I reckon the total would have been closer to £700, even £800. In hindsight, I didn't actually need the Mixer G add-on, as I have one of their older models, which features a dual immersion. That said, Having it installed means the tank's destratification pump runs automatically, which helps to maximize the amount of solar PV I can divert. Now let's compare my usage before and after the addition of the Eddy. As I installed the Eddy halfway through April, it made sense to compare the three months since then with the three months from the previous year, which is May, June and July. Look back to 2022, you'll see the usage is fairly consistent and it averages out at approximately 7 kilowatt hours a day. We were away for a total of 11 days across the three months, and during that time the Mixergy would have been in holiday mode and not heating. All the figures I present here come from the Mixergy app, and whilst the gas usage is an estimate, it tallies closely with the figures from Octopus. Jumping forward to 2023 and looking at the same three months, you can immediately see the reduction. We weren't away from home as much, but we still imported significantly less electricity and almost no gas. I put the previous figures in brackets so you can see the difference. We used 75% less electricity in June, which was the sunniest month so far this year. Now, accounting for the days we were away, and combining gas and electricity together, we get a total import figure of 600 kilowatt hours for May, June and July, 2022. Looking at 2023, we have an import figure of 242 kilowatt hours for the same three months. That's a 60% reduction in the amount of energy imported from the grid. The Eddy diverted a total of 312 kilowatt hours of solar into the hot water tank giving us a combined total of 544 kilowatt hours. That's a 10% reduction over the same period last year. In terms of our actual hot water usage for those three months, we used 13,796 litres in 2022 and 13,989 litres in 2023, which doesn't quite account for this 10% reduction. Perhaps it's because I dropped the water temperature down, we showered for less time, or we're not washing our children as much. An investigation for another day. So how did the two periods compare? 
The total reduction in imported power was 358 kilowatt hours or 60%, which isn't actually too shabby. However, when you look at the actual costs, it's not that impressive. If I paid for the equivalent in off-peak electricity, I'd be looking at £27. How does it compare if I use peak rate electricity instead of gas to top up the hot water? If we look at June 2022 in particular, and assume that the gas usage equates to peak electricity usage, the figures are slightly different. If we used 14 kilowatt hours of peak rate electricity to top up instead of gas, it would have cost about four pound. The 146 kilowatt hours that were put in off peak would have cost 10 pounds and 95 pence. That's a grand total of 14 pounds 95 pence versus the two pounds 60 I put in this year which is the saving of just £12.35. Again, not exactly massive sums of money versus the cost of installation. So what's the verdict? Firstly, there's no realistic payback period. June was the best solar month so far, and I only saved £12. Given the months either side would be less, I expect the total savings per year to be around £40. That's a 14 year payback for me based on current off peak electricity prices. If unit prices were to fall back to 5p a unit, that becomes closer to 20 years. Secondly, I ignored the payments for PV export. If I didn't have the Eddy and I exported all the surplus, I would have earned about £13. That would pay for 25 days of hot water by itself. On the plus side, I burned a lot less gas and my reduction in imported power means less CO2, which counts for a lot in my mind. We've also had a lot more hot water readily available, which was nice for washing up and filling the kids' bath. I'm going to add some home automation control to link the Mixergy's charge level with the eddy, so we'll stop diverting once the tank reaches 100% instead of using the immersion safety cutoff. As we're coming into September, I probably won't see the effects of this until next year, but I'll do a video on the setup anyway. So would I install another one? I probably would. As my primary motivation is cutting CO2, the eddy is worth the cost to me. If you have any questions or want to know more, please use the comments and I'll do my best to help. I'm very active on Twitter, so if you're interested in this sort of thing, you can follow me there. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you want to follow me on my journey, please do subscribe. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.